world mirrors around the world. Each time you give me the new compound and each time I shoot out. Each and every story you tell gets to school so the people have the power to bring in play and make a difference. We'll be bringing you the full story behind the name. This is story of Tasha the Iranian life. of Egypt's military reconnaissance command who led his troops in both wars of 1967 and 1973, the War of the 6th of October victory. Former football player who joined the military and the son of an elite police officer, his Major General Ali Hibli, who stressed always that the Egyptian father was as mentioned before in the words of Prophet Muhammad peace and prayers be upon him when he told his companions that the Egyptian soldier is the Earth's greatest warrior. Here's the story. In Russia, he studied latest reconnaissance strategies and techniques, while in the United States, he studied politics and administration. Him being Egypt's vice military attaché in Washington, he opens up about his memories in war and peace as leading Egypt's development strategies in North Sinai as well. For two and a half years, when appointed its governor, referring to it as the greatest challenge of his career. Governor of North Sinai, Egypt's vice military at in Washington, as well as former vice defense minister, and on top of all that, he's one of the heroes of the 6th of October victory. His mission was always behind the lines of the Israeli army to provide precise, accurate, and full information on the enemy's troops and equipment. The information that was behind making the right decisions and as the Israelis then were supported from external powers with high-tech equipment that exceeded the power of the Egyptian technical capabilities, the Egyptian father did a great job using human power to conduct reconnaissance missions that made almost all the troops aware of full details of their mission. We'll enjoy some amazing memories and depth coverage of the war, as well as some insights and paths to success right now. October war and a lot of memories and victories despite the lengthy coverage, were not fully presented. Him digging deep into that time, it was easy for me to recognize it here in his eyes. Maybe this is the special thing about your school, because yes. when you go uh, during an operation, you're surrounded with the whole army, but when you go to get information, alone. you're going alone. Alone. The psychological factors play uh, a great role there. Uh, really, um, th th they have uh, full courage mm. to fulfill such missions. Mm. So m maybe some of them, you know, stayed in the enemy rear more than six months. Mm. Really, they are uh, heroes and uh, I am proud of them. Uh, all my soldiers at, at uh, that time, they have done uh, a very good job for the armed forces and for Egypt. <laughs> 
Major General Ali Hafzi, all the pleasure of speaking to you and going back in time to enjoy those glamorous moments of success of the Cuba victory. It's a pleasure to me. Thank, Thank you. you. You were assigned to carry out reconnaissance mission during the heroic October victory, a mission that was no easy one. Yes. And no ordinary one due to the high tech that was available to our enemies. Yes. Yet we were still behind them with many years in the equipment and the technology because they were supported with satellite information provided to them by the Americans. How did you, and uh, along with your soldiers, carry out your mission of success? We'll dig a little bit into your memory. Uh, really, it was a very hard time for us before October War 1973. Uh, because without having the idea and uh, all the details about the Israeli troops in Sinai, it is very difficult to, to launch such uh, wide-range operation, operation mm -hmm. uh, from all the uh, Egyptian armored forces, mm -hmm. the ground forces, the air forces, the navy forces, and the airplanes. For so, uh, it was what very what essential how to get information about and the details about the disposition of the Israeli troops and their movement mm -hmm. and the depth of Sinai and their activities in Sinai, how, how they are planning to counter our uh, attack if we are looking for such operation. Mm -hmm. Let me first start by asking you, describe to me the difference in the level of equipment and the difference in technical capabilities. Uh, yes, uh, you know that the technical capabilities mean the that you have, as the example, mm. the night vision devices which you can watch the other side at night. We okay. don't, when we don't have such equipment mm. in our forces at that time. The major thing I knew that it was that they were supported with satellite information. That is, w that is one what? side, one side of the you know technical equipment they have with close cooperation with the Americans, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the second item, as I told you, uh, as example, the radars. They have radars uh, with long-range radars which can detect all the activities maybe to tens uh, of kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, the second, uh, the third item maybe as I, the, you know, technical uh, cameras in the uh, Air Force to detect and uh, have a picture mm. of the disposition of the forces. Mm. Most of these equipment was not available to our forces. Mm. So how come we can have such, you know, uh, clear mm. uh, and uh, very accurate disposition of the Israeli forces all around Sinai? Mm. So we think about how to use our people our soldiers, our officers, to choose, choose one, one of the best, uh, you know, uh, group. They are our real test. Yes, they, yeah. really. Uh, let me at last tell you about what uh, the Minister of, Zra uh, of Defense of Israeli Forces, mm. Moshe Dan, said about that. Mm. But at last, after I explain mm. what they have done, you know. Mm. So we choose some group from our officers the best group of our officers and uh, soldiers, mm. a small group, four or five persons, mm. uh, very well trained, mm. uh, carries, uh, you know, the they have the carriage. The factor. Yes. Play and uh, significant factor. They have, uh, you know, physical fitness. Mm. 
and high moral and they train them how to penetrate mm. the enemy uh, or the Israeli forces then you deploy them behind the lines yes. of the Israeli troops to penetrate uh, by foot or by the helicopters or by boats whatever sacrificing their lives sure sure because it is you know they are uh, in danger mm. all around the 24 hours mm. and the Israeli forces they are trying to catch them mm. using all the technical and personal means to detect where they are maybe this is the tricky thing about your troops because yes. when you go uh, during an operation you're surrounded with the whole army but when you go to get into the alone. you're going alone alone the psychological factors play uh, a great role there uh, really uh, and they, they have uh, full courage mm. to fulfill such mission mm. so m maybe some of them you know stayed in the enemy rear more than six months Really, they are uh, heroes, and uh, I am proud of them, o all my soldiers. At, at uh, that time, they have done uh, a very good job mm. for the armed forces and for Egypt. Mm. But you did a great job covering them. How did you manage to do that? Stay six months behind the lines of the troops. That is, you know, th the technical... How did you protect them? Technical tactics. Mm. That means they have to uh, go from place to place, not mm. to stay in one place for a long time. Mm. Uh, they have to send their messages in a very quick, quick uh, mm. message and uh, in security message, not to be detected mm. by the enemy. Mm. Uh, sending them the information about the around the Israeli forces which can discover them. You know. There are many tactics to protect them as you ask me now, mm -hmm. but uh, I think at last uh, they have done a good job because the percentage of the success mm -hmm. of these groups, it was more than 85%. So it is a very, a very high degree of success if you compare it with the others during the, you know, the history of such operations. I read that uh, due to what you've done there, almost every uh, operation for our soldiers, they were uh, equipped with all data and information they needed then. They know all the numbers, all the positions, all the details of the troops and their equipment. Every mission ca that came out from the Egyptian part was well aware and well informed with what was in their mission. They were there was no chance to find much much information that wasn't available before uh, going for this operation. Uh, that's right. You know, mm. the uh, uh, the somebody mentioned that mm. the Israeli forces bought an open book mm. in front of the Egyptian commander. Mm. They know all the details about the disposition of these troops, their training, their uh, combat uh, efficiency, their uh, uh, methods of countering our attack. So it was really uh, an open book for our commander. So it was, uh, they have a good plan mm. for that and the operation was very successful. Those minutes were not enough by any means to, de to describe what happened there because to get all that information is something that uh, incredible, something very great to provide all this information to our troops, to assure them meantime, and at the same time, the other troops equipped with the latest technologies, they were not at the same, uh, at the same level. To answer your uh, point, mm. Mufida Yan, the Minister of Defense of the Israeli Forces, mm. after the war, one of uh, his words about mm. the battle itself, 